I'm inviting again, yes, our two finalists on stage who were faster than I was. So I'm happy to welcome Stefano Moni, who is a, a member of the National Police uh, Senior Technical uh, Executive Team, and Mateusz Stancic, who is the team leader for the second project uh, of our finalists. So Maeve, maybe you want to uh, have a word with our guests. Yes, perhaps I will um, try to introduce a bit, and certainly you can say uh, much better the real content uh, of these uh, projects that we have seen. We understand that your team, in fact, is composed of uh, Francesco Talone, of course, but also Stefano Moni and Giuseppe Restivo. That's, uh, it's, you're representing, they are here. <laughs> so, good to see all of you. And uh, that you are three um, police officers from the Data Protection office in the Italian Criminal Police uh, Central and with this award we want to reward your personal efforts on carrying out an innovative procurement strategy to design and implement the Cyber Security Operations Center of the Italian Criminal um, Police. This center is an innovative and technologically advanced solution conceived to monitor and contrast cyber threats faced by the information systems managed by the uh, Italian Criminal Police and it also helps with the interconnected law enforcement agencies. So, here you are and perhaps um, you may want to say a bit more what you actually have been doing. Thank you. We have a, maybe... Hello? Yes, the mic Thank is you. Thank you very much. Thank you to the European Innovation Council. I, I'm so excited and happy to be here because uh, our project uh, is, uh, it is fully European. It's European from A to Z and for at least four major reasons. The first one is because the project was set up in order to enforce the 680 directive on data protection for law enforcement uh, processing of data. The second reason is because uh, uh, the main Italian national databases uh, are protected by this center and one of them is the national Schengen information system which is quite critical for all European citizens. The uh, third one is uh, uh, because the uh, procurement strategy uh, is uh, absolutely innovative and made possible for 3,000 business operators registered on the fully digital platform to potentially participate in the tender. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, three of the five lots of the big tender were awarded to small and medium enterprises. And last but not least, another reason for, because this project is fully European, is because part of the money uh, came from the ISF fund. So it, it, it's a project co-funded by the European Union. So I, I'm so happy to be here because this project deals about fundamental rights. We are talking about data protection and talking about privacy, which are fundamental rights and, so, and they are so important for our community. So uh, the, the innovation of this project is not just uh, in the procurement, uh, but in the idea itself of joining together cyber security and data protection where law enforcement specialists work side by side to protect our information, our asset of information. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano. your team work on and how did your team get here? Thank you very much. I would like to use this occasion to speak about important problems which are involving our project. So what drives the researchers and entrepreneurs in their ambition for innovation? It's profit, it's recognition. The third thing is the pro bono approach towards solving local or global problems. Does it counteract the problems uh, and the risk of the innovation, innovation process? Yes, it, it does. But what is the problem with the public procurers? What is driving them? It's the responsibility for the society and for public funds. Does it counteract the problems of the innovation process? 
not at all. Because with regard to the public procurers, the general regulations and the public controlling authorities do not recognize failure as acceptable in the public sector. And without acceptance and tolerance for failure, we have no innovation. The legal model which was created <laughs> the legal model which was created by us for the National Center of Research and Development has supported them in implementing the strategy in a scalable and standard standard way. So they were able to launch nine procurements within only eight months. We have mitigated the most of the legal risks connected with the public procurement, but still there is much more to come. Even though our model is a, guide, is a uh, good practice shown by the Polish Public Office for Public Procurement, it's still not sufficient. I believe that we have to make a strong call.